So let's hop right on in. Um, so you started out on YouTube singing like most of us. I also did that. Then transitioned into being this hit songwriter, Priscilla Renee, that's your real name. Um, you know, in the industry that everybody knows you by. And then now you're fully taken on being the artist Money Long. That's, that's amazing. How did you get here? Like we see, you know, for some people who don't know your history, they might see you on TikTok and just think like she blew up overnight, you know? In your own words, like how did you get here? In other terms, what was it like for you growing up? Um, you know, how were you as a child? Were you always singing? What was your upbringing like that got you to where you are now? I grew up in a very musical household. My mom can sing, my biological father can sing. He plays the trumpet. We had instruments, um, like the uh, upright piano and my dad had his trumpet, um, congas, you know, things like that, just all over the house. Um, there was always music. I honestly just thought that it was something that everybody could do. Um, and I think from a very young age, I knew like I was gonna do something with music. I just didn't know that this particular path was an option. I always wanted to be like a ballerina or be on Broadway. Yeah. Um, so that's really like it, I went to an art school in middle school, um, La Villa School of the Arts in Jacksonville. Um, I went to DeSoto, Douglas Anderson School of the Arts in Jacksonville. I was always in the theater program, um, singing in show choir in school. Like it was just a known thing that I was the girl who could sing, you know, um, even to the point where like the bullies in school would protect me. Because they were like, don't touch her. Like, you know, um, I used to always be singing for people in the, in the lunchroom. And like, that was my superpower. So like, my dad was in the Navy. So we always moved around. And as soon as they found out that I could sing, I was immediately like in the popular crowd. Not necessarily like I wasn't like a popular kid, but because um, I was a nerd. Like, I really loved to learn and like read. I used to get paid to do people's homework <laughs> wow um, yeah they used to give me like 20 i'll be like 20 dollars i write your paper um yeah i was always like the nerdy smart girl and um when people found out i could sing it would always just kind of like create this new thing around me so music has always been a part of my story it just there's never been a moment where like i wasn't singing yeah. I wasn't doing something like it, whether it was like in the church or in school and drama and choir or at somebody's wedding or somebody's funeral like that was me like I was always the one um especially like because I was so young mm -hmm. singing you know like you know you see those videos of like six-year-olds seven-year-olds singing with like full power yeah. um that was me like it I didn't I wasn't a late bloomer like I've been singing like this since I was eight, 10 years, obviously, you know, it, it gets more and more like honed in as you get older, but um, I've always sort of known that this was going to be my path. And then YouTube came along mm -hmm. and I began to upload videos of myself singing, um, you know, staring in the camera, talking to people. Um, did that for about two years and then I got discovered. Mm -hmm. um, signed a record deal to Capitol Records in 2008. So actually, no, like about four years, because I started on YouTube in 2004, I uploaded my first video. Mm -hmm. So from 2004 to 2008, I was singing online. And then I got a record deal and I put out my first um, EP with, the, with some of the songs that I had written on YouTube. So like, Hello My Apple, Cry, mm -hmm. I Fell In Love With You. Um, those were some of the ones that had like gone viral on YouTube. And then from there, I finished up my first album and um, released a song called Dollhouse, which was like very EDM. Like it was basically like Katy Perry. Mm -hmm. Like I was supposed to be the black Katy Perry, you know. Um, that's the way that they had framed it. And the song, it did okay. It was like, you know, it was a pop song like in terms of pop success it, it was it didn't do the greatest but um I did chart and it was on MTV and things like that I went on radio promo tour it was like me Jason Derulo Kesha Justin Bieber mm -hmm. Hot Shell Ray you know a lot of those names actually like continued on and went on to do like really awesome things 
And then it started kind of like, like, you know, going down. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'm not trying to go back to my mom's house. So what can I do? And that summer I had went on tour with Akon. Uh, he brought me on tour with him on the OMG tour when he was, um, you know, touring the world with Usher. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to be riding with him on the, he had a studio bus that was following behind the um, tour buses. And like halfway through the tour, it broke down. Like the AC unit stopped working or something. So he went, sent it to go get fixed, but it never came back. So I was just on the road, like, you know, with them for the rest of the tour. Mm -hmm. And it was then that I decided, I was like, okay, I definitely don't want to go back to Florida. Like I want to stay in the mix. Oh, this is what I want to do. And I decided um, I'm going to go, I'm going to move to LA from Atlanta mm-hmm. and try to become a songwriter. Cause that's where, you know, everybody's telling me that's where the money's at. So um, moved to LA, started writing my first couple of sessions. I want to even say like my first session, that song was called Promise This. Mm-hmm. And it went to an artist named Cheryl Cole. She's huge in the UK. Um, and that was like my first really big placement. And it went number one in the UK. And the second song that I writ- wrote for her called The Flood, that went top 10. Mm-hmm. And from there, it was just like, boom, Selena Gomez, who says, Chris Brown, Don't Wake Me Up, Rihanna, California, King Bad, Madonna, Mary J. Blige, um, Demi Lovato, uh, who else? Pitbull and Kesha Timber, um, Carrie Underwood, Miranda Lambert. And it just kept going like boom 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 every year with something else um and then it got to a point where I was like "Eh, okay after 10 12 years doing that I was like okay I just have some things that I want to say that I don't want anybody telling me to change or you know can you tweak this word can you do this like I just want to say what I want to say I want to speak to my people wherever they are Mm -hmm. um and then deep down I knew that I had like that core fan base from, or that core support system from back when I was on YouTube, I knew they were out there somewhere. Um, And I just decided like, all right, I wanna switch it up. I wanna do something like, I'm tired of this. I feel like I've outgrown this. And um, I just decided like, okay, let me switch it up, change my name, start over, hit reset. uh, And Money Long was born. What was it like for you growing up in your household? What did you listen to? So much stuff. Um, my mom was always listening to like the jig joint type of stuff. So like, um, I don't even know. Was it rated R? Like, I need for to be in here tonight. All these thick ass hoes here tonight. Like <laughs> that type of stuff. Like cool, cool cow in my projects. You know, mm-hmm. she was super, dare I say ghetto. Like, you know what I'm saying? Um, she used to always be listening to that type of stuff. Kaya, my neck, my back. Like, she was just ratchet. But she also would be listening to, like, Marvin Cease, mm-hmm. um, Clarence Carter. You know, I'd be stroking. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, stuff yeah. that I really didn't have. I didn't have no business listening to that when I was a kid. Um, but then on the other hand, she'd be listening to, like, Shirley Murdoch. Um, you know, Patti LaBelle. She had that one song. She used to wear us out with that. Um, I don't go shopping for love. There's something money came by. I don't know if you know that song, but I don't. Oh my god, she used to wear us out with that Patty LaBelle song. My dad was always listening to like the be- the boom bap, like um, Q Tip, you know, vibrant thing, um, jazz music, John Coltrane. You know, then my brother was like, my older brother was listening to Biggie, um, Tupac, Jay-Z. You know, he used to always be watching Rap City, The Basement. Oh, yeah. Hated it. Like, I used to hate rap music. Maybe it's because I really didn't like my brother. But <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate it. And then I was listening to, um, like, NSYNC and, like, Destiny's Child, like, TRL Countdown, you know. Yeah. Um, so, like, the pop stuff. Aaliyah, you know. Um, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. So it was very eclectic. And then on Sunday mornings, of course, we listen to gospel music. That's all Black households. Um, but now, you know, it's very much like classical music, 
soundscapes, you know, um, binaural beats, like very much like frequency clearing music because there's so much stuff that, you know, we have so much more technology than we did back then. It's like cell phone, TV, car radio, like microwave, all these weight frequencies and like vibrations and waves um, going in and out of your body that a lot of times like when I'm not working on music or if I'm not getting dressed to go out or something like that um, or on a road trip or just like, you know, trying to turn up, I really just listen to things to calm me down. Yeah, I love that, especially when I'm sleeping. I love to listen to stuff like that. You did mention a lot of um, names of artists that you listened to growing up, um, but you've also worked with some really big names too. And you named a few of them in the beginning um, from the Chris Brown to the Rihanna's to uh, co-wrote for Mariah Carey, all kinds of stuff. Um, okay. Have you actually got a chance to work with some of these artists like in the studio? Because I know sometimes a lot of writers, you um, you might have a studio session, but I'm not sure if you actually work you know, side by side with the artists when you're writing sometimes. Um, if so, what has been like one of your favorite writing sessions that you can think of? So I pretty much work with every artist um, in the studio except Madonna. Okay. I did not get to work with Madonna, but she passed messages. So that was cool. Um, but I think my favorite sessions would be between Mary J and Mariah. Mary was so cool. She was like, you know, she was just cool. Like, I can't even really put my finger on anything that she did. She just was, like, cool as hell. It just made me realize, like, okay, you could be the queen. You could be strong and, you know, demand your respect without being a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just kind of, you know, you you got that aura, the way you carry yourself. Mary definitely has that. Um, it's very sweet. Um, very hardworking. I just love when... Like Mariah's the same way. It's like if they recognize talent, yeah. they encourage you. You know, they big you up like, oh, you dope. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it, it was never any like, you're doing too much now. But sit down. Like, it was never that. Um, Mariah even like would give me tips about um, the right kind of lighting, yeah. you know, wow. like, you know, never let the light be here. You always want it to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, without I want to give y'all the secret you know what I'm saying um <laughs> she she just was like very encouraging and you know telling me like you want to always take care of your voice and make sure you do this before you go to sleep and these are just priceless moments right so like um I don't know more than just even just being around them and just watching how they move and how graceful they are mm -hmm. um both of these women just those little intangible things that you can't pay for like you know what I mean no, absolutely I'm happy that you even uh spoke on them giving you positive energy because I did want to ask you um about being like a songwriter I know that sometimes it can be challenging right mm -hmm. um can you speak on some of those pressures or challenges that you've ever felt either early on or even um up until recently um as not only a black woman in the music industry as a songwriter but um, just being a, a songwriter with a big range, like what are some of those pressures or challenges that you have felt personally? This is like a two double-edged sword, right? Because up to a certain point, I was so um, like innocent, because I don't want to say like gullible, because I wasn't, yeah. nobody was tricking me, but it was like, I was so innocent, like, you know, yay, we're all making music, you know, um, that, a lot of the stuff that people might have been trying to enforce or impose on me, it just went over my head, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I was kind of like an airhead in that respect, where I'm just like, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, just have back to the song, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then when I did become aware, self-aware, should I say, I realized that, like, people's actions have nothing to do with you. You know, it's like, okay like when I see somebody doing something that really isn't cute I'm just like oh, okay that's your choice all right that's what you're gonna choose that's unfortunate <laughs> you know what I'm saying like okay well you're not gonna last very long doing that but I hope it's worth it um and yes I did have lots of moments where like producers would say inappropriate things in the studio and I just kind of would kind of just be like ew like you know what I'm saying like I didn't really have that um 
oh well I can't say anything like it was like ew why would you even say that get out like you know what I'm saying like yeah. more like little sister mm -hmm. kind of energy of like okay maybe you gotta confuse I'm actually here to work like no we're not doing that um yeah I just I mean and even like I did have one instance and maybe you know maybe it did affect me subconsciously I'm not really sure but I did have this one lady she's a marketing supposed to be like one of the best marketing people in the business she came to visit me in the studio like early when I was like 19 when I first signed the Capitol and she was like this is when I was doing like the Katy Perry kind of music she was like nobody wants to see a dark skin big butt wide nose girl singing that kind of music oh my god and I kind of like like I said it goes over your head right so I kind of was like oh she's talking about me oh oh okay like because I had never thought about that before I didn't think of I didn't think that that's how people viewed me you know right. um so I mean in a sense maybe that did affect me subconsciously I mean I still kind of like kept doing what I was doing um because that's just what was in me at the time um but other than that I mean like people have said things to me about them your album's never coming out um you know you need to stay a songwriter and I have a like a, I have a problem with like people telling me what to do so it's kind of like um because my mom didn't let me go outside till I was 19 I couldn't do nothing couldn't go to the mall couldn't go play with my friends nothing so when I got out the house, I was like, you know, about to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Do what I want to do. I'm grown. Right. Um, and I like really, it like makes my blood boil when somebody tries to tell me what to do. It really does. Like you can ask me and I'll do anything. But as soon as you start trying to handle me, I'm just like, okay, let me show you something. Um, so that kind of stuff like really fueled me and really made me be like, bet when I get on, please keep that same energy um and a lot of those people have actually come back and apologized mm -hmm. since the song you know is doing what it's doing and my project and it's not just the one song it's like I really have created this audience and like this devoted support system um with the fans or the people who love my music um I just feel like the word fan is a little weird for me anyway maybe not, not for some people but it's just weird um because this is it separates us right because I don't think we're separate I think it's like it's a symbiotic relationship so I like to say like supporters um followers maybe even but you know they've come back to me and said like yo you didn't let anybody tell you that you couldn't do it and I'm proud of you you know and a part of me wants to be like you know say some some curse words um but the other part of me is like okay see yes maybe now you'll be inspired to like support people and you know see somebody else who's super talented and encourage them right you know because what does that hurt you to encourage somebody whether or not they go on to do whatever it doesn't hurt you to say you know what I fuck with that like good luck mm -hmm. can we like take nothing from you why do people feel like you know why it's just low-hanging fruit to just be like, oh man, that shit is whack. Like everybody deserves the opportunity to express themselves at whatever level they know how. You know, you wouldn't tell a two-year-old their scribble is ugly. You wouldn't do that. So why do we do that to each other? I don't understand. It kind of touching on what I wanted to ask you next. Um, in your opinion, do you think the music industry can be traumatic for some artists or songwriters? Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. It's The world is traumatic. <laughs> So let's just say that, like, mm -hmm. the world is so negatively polarized. Like, it's our first instinct to hate on something. I mean, I got people calling me one hit wonder, you know, telling me um, I look like Michael Jackson, saying things about, um, you know, are you a man? Just like, yeah. come on, guys. Like, it's a Black woman who has funded this thing, who has built her own, you know, uh company like rebranded from the ground up and did this and like do you really understand 
what this means for the future of creators. I mean, it did take a lot of investment from me, from myself, but, you know, in the past, it was said that money isn't enough. You need relationships. You need this, you need that. And I've just proven that that's not the case. You need dedication. Obviously, you got to have yourself together. Like, I know who I am. I know how to, you know, present to the world in a, you know, in a, um, in a package that is palatable that people like I'm you know I'm easy to digest visually um sonically like the music is is relatable and it's not too far left right. to where you know it's, it's, there's there's not anyone who feels left out even though it is specific to R&B and like my story and the black girl perspective um the way I've chosen to like paint the pictures anyone can step into those shoes and step into the lyrics and like fill it so there is a formula but it's possible you know something that people have told us that isn't possible I'm charting I'm like I think the the billboard hot 100 prediction for this week or next week um if I don't quote me on this but I saw something that said I had gone up um 12 spots from number 34 to 22 on the hot 100 I'm independent like that's huge that's huge Mm -hmm. and I think bigger than me it has just opened the door for anybody who's crazy enough and tenacious enough um and relentless enough to come behind me and do the same thing so I just I feel so I I don't want to say sorry but I just really disappointed when people choose the low-hanging fruit to like tear me down instead of trying to study it and trying to figure out like what does she do how does she do that because it's all right there like I'm not hiding anything I'm fully transparent Absolutely. you know and I'm hoping the reason why I'm doing it that way is because I'm hoping somebody will be like me and be you know scouring um every interview and every conversation that I have and every post that I have and all my social medias is all there for you to like go look and try for yourself so I think it's it's like it's traumatizing but I think that's just the way the world is and I think nobody has well I won't say nobody but there's very few people who have done the internal work and I'm still growing I'm still working on myself I'm not perfect and there are moments where I just want to be like bitch fuck you you know what I'm saying (laughs) but I catch myself and I'm just like that's not gonna do anything you know you can't um for someone to change their perspective or accept a higher way. Right. Only thing you can do is lead by example and continue to be graceful, gracious. Um, and eventually people will realize like, that's really her. Like that's really her, like she's pure like that, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I definitely was traumatized for sure. I had um, PTSD in many, many ways. And that's part of the reason probably why I developed the auto autoimmune and like lupus and because it's stress related. Um, but because of that, it has forced me to elevate and evolve. So I'm grateful for all these things. Although I wish nobody had to go through it because it's really sucks. And that sounds very traumatic. Like I couldn't even imagine, um, you know, even with you saying that, I know you've been very open about, like you said, some of the things that, that have happened, like you had a lawsuit with your former management um, like you said, it caused physical stress, um, emotional stress. Would you say um, because of your traumatic experiences, has it changed the way you trust people in the industry and who you work with and who you don't work with? Absolutely. I mean, but trust like has nothing to do with it at this point. It's more like an energy thing. Like, yeah, I um I check everything with my heart and like I'm I'm moving before anybody else comes into my auric field. Um, or my orbit, I have already set my intentions and set, you know, my frequency set. I've done my frequency set. My vibration is what it is. And so it's like anything coming into my orbit um, is coming because it's on the same level as me. And then there are some things that maybe I've attracted from a lower frequency that I'm dealing with now. And I just kind of have to like, because, you know, you're continuously elevating, right? So whatever is in your your life right now or in your space right now are things that you've attracted from different levels of frequency and there are some things that I'm just like I wish I had waited a little bit longer 
until I had elevated to a place where this wouldn't be happening. But, you know, everything comes into your life for a reason. Um, and I think what I've learned is that when you just like take a deep breath and accept and just be like, okay, what is this here to teach me? Um, things tend to like dissolve on their own. Yeah. Um, you don't really have to do anything except for like show up and acknowledge. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just tried to make sure that I reset my intention every day and I, you know, never, never get off course for too long. Mm -hmm. So like, there might be something that really pisses me off and I might spend maybe a day, um, you know, and it's been getting shorter and shorter um, the, the, the further I get in my journey. But maybe I'll spend like a day, maybe a couple hours. I mean, my husband holds me accountable too, where he'd be like, all right, you've been talking about that. You know, I'm like, you right, you right, you know. We need those. Um, we do. Yeah, so like the time frame where like I'm saturated in things that aren't bringing me joy, aren't making me happy. Um, you know, my team too, like my managers will be like, I'm sensing some stress in your voice, P. Like maybe just take a second because everybody around me knows I'm very zen. Um, and I do everything from like a sense of, purpose and I speak up and be like yeah I don't like that that really disappointed me I don't really like the way you're talking to me so maybe can we just like pause for a second um I do everything from a place of love so it's never like how dare you like it's never that energy it's like hey are you okay I don't, are you going through something because you're being really mean right now and I don't really like it you know um so that's you know I just kind of set the tone like that I'm actually happy that you um you spoke on that because I feel like you know, we're not even going to get into the drama. I don't think we need to, but um, we all seen what's been going on, you know, on the web, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm so happy that you said that, that you are Zen and you don't really dive into the drama. Um, um, like I said, I do want to know though, are you still writing for other singers right now as you're pushing money long? Like, are you still even dabbling in like writing for other people right now? Um, I mean, I'll write with people like me and Kay Kilo, she signed to the baby. Um, we just had a session. It was so fun. She's like a ball of energy. So like there's things like that where it's like I'll pull up and we do something together. But as far as me just like writing for other people, I mean, people still ask, um, and, you know, worst, that's, you know, worst I could say is no. Right. Um, people still ask. But I think just focusing my energy like I'm not yet where I want to be. Yet. I don't feel that money long is at the place yet that. um where she's like really at her peak and, and just coasting and, and sitting in that. So I want to keep the energy focused there until I'm at that place. Um, and anything that's coming in, that's going to add to my goal. Absolutely. But taking my focus away from money long and putting it into something else, I'm not at the place where I want to do that. And then, you know, there were a few things that I was working on last year because somebody asked me to, and as you know, as we talked about, like me attracting things that were at a certain frequency. Um, at the time, I was at a place where it was cool. And then as I've like evolved and ascended a little bit higher, I realized like, yeah, that was maybe a little lower um, on the frequency right. that, you know, because, you know, just because somebody is like really successful doesn't mean that they've got a hold or on their you know, vibration like yes. that. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of successful people who are always in a headline. They're always involved in some drama. I don't want to be that. That's not, it's no judgment, mm -hmm. just an observation. Some people just haven't taken the time to really, you know, get help, get therapy, um, work on themselves, you know? I love that. I love that answer. Um, so since you've been blowing up with hours and hours, like I said, a lot of people are just getting on to you. For those who didn't, you know, know who Priscilla Renee is, now everybody's like, who's Money Long? Um, since this song has been blowing up, but you kind of mentioned this, but how has the love been? Um, have you, like, I know you said people have been reaching out to you that, you know, wasn't really trying to mess with you before. Like, how has that been as far as, like, relationships with people since you've been getting bigger because of this song? I think in a sense, like, you know, nobody loves you till everybody loves you, right? And so I don't take it personally. I think if I had been in any position um on like you know internally and just like spiritually emotionally mentally I might have felt some type of way not gonna lie um and I might have like been petty 
just because I'm a Virgo, like Virgos can be very petty. Um, and I might have been petty and been like, I'm not even gonna answer that, you know. But I don't do that now. It's just like, you know, we're all adults, you know what you did, whatever. Like it takes a lot for you to for someone to admit they're wrong, even if they don't come out and say it like, you know, you can tell when somebody has a shift in energy where like before when you walked in the room they might have acted like they didn't see you or didn't know you um and now it's just like hey what's up oh my god congratulations I just take it I say thank you very much oh my okay you look beautiful yes thank you awesome and I just move on because it's like you know again what harm is it doing it's not hurting anybody I don't have to be your best friend you know and also too like I truly believe you never know how God is trying to get the blessing to you. So I'm not going, you know, I'm not going to hate on somebody just because maybe they made an immature choice in the past. Um, sometimes though, <clears throat> the people that be calling my phone, I do be looking at it like, <laughs> like really? <laughs> okay, girl, you know, uh, but I just, you know, let that moment pass, let that ego pass. And then I'll respond like, hey, what's up? What you trying to do? Because all of it is going to, helped me get to my ultimate goal, which is, um, you know, being at the top. And I had, I had mentioned this to, um, I was talking to a, an old friend, Puff, um, brother love. And I had said, like, you know, I realized at a certain point that um, if my end goal was to be on stage at the Grammys or, you know, be in the rooms with all of these people who I've looked up to, who I've rubbed elbows with, um, who may or may not have supported me in the past, I couldn't be in that room and really be the light that I wanted to be if I was upset with this person over here and that person over here. And as my energy is just going haywire because I'm just like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> I really wanted to enjoy the moment whenever it did come. So I just really worked on like forgiving those things, even if a person didn't realize they did something to me. So it's like, you know, when you think of that person, you think of what they did to you what you know what was done to you if you bring it up in your your mental or your your spiritual space and you feel like attention that means you haven't let it go yet so I had to keep doing that over and over until I felt nothing until I just was like happy you know and I'm at the end of the day I'm happy to be alive I'm happy to be here I'm happy that this is my third time around the block um I'm just happy you know I, I just love the energy. I really do. Um, I want to get right into hours and hours. I want to talk a little bit more about that. It's like the number one R&B song right now on social media. It's just in time for Valentine's Day. Like I can't wait to see the videos. Um, now, you found that beat on YouTube, which is really yeah. to me because anybody could have gotten that beat, but you got the beat you ate, you know, in the, in the song. <laughs> How does it feel now to have a big hit, not only as a songwriter, but now you as the, the artist, and the songwriter how does that feel is it like a full circle moment for you it's amazing it just feels like finally like okay finally y'all can leave me alone get off my back like get out the way you know what i'm saying like i'm just being the person that i've always been uh, maybe a little bit more mature and a little bit more wise and a little bit more skilled but now i've got that validation of like okay she's she's really good like she's she's one of us let's move let's let her through um but back to the youtube piece it's so weird because this was my first time um, having a song that I found, on, you know, a beat that I found on YouTube. When I tell you there's like a thousand people hitting me up, like, that's my beat. You took my song, you know. It's like, baby, I got the beat off YouTube just like you did. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I guess that comes with the territory, right? Because, you know, they're hearing it everywhere. So naturally, um, if they don't know anything about, like, the business or, you know, how those licenses versus exclusive rights work, you know, hey, what can you say? But it is a little bit like, it's one of those situations where like, I wanna take the time to explain it to them, but at the same time, I know that once somebody has like a certain mm -hmm. perspective on you, like there's nothing you could do to say, you know what I mean? They're like, you know, give me credit. I need my credit. Like for what? Like we, we, we all wrote to the same beat, baby. I don't know what you want me to say, you know? Not so yet. that would be the only, it's like really annoying. I'll probably, won't do that again but you lock that beat down like you own it like that's yours so yeah we can now but it's, it's still it's like you know all the people who came before me um 
and like wrote to the beat because I think when I found the beat it was at like 100k views and then by the time I went back to look at it it was like 700k wow. so that's 700,000 people or even if you take half of that you know 350,000 people who have the beat it's a lot of people it's a lot of songs you know and um, out of all those songs mine is the one so that's what are you gonna do do you ever question like um all the love you're receiving now right um do you ever question like the if it's genuine or like does it feel real to you yet like does it feel like people really love me or does it feel like oh because i my song kind of you know blew up on tiktok and whatnot like do you feel like it's genuine in any kind of way like how do you feel about the love you're receiving i mean of course some of it comes as a result of like success like but you could tell like that's easy to decipher I know who really is here for me and who just is around because it's like, oh, cool. Now let me come over here and get some of this, what you got. And you, both of those are fine. You know, it's like, whatever, as long as it's mutually beneficial. Um, I don't care. You do have a whole new team of people surrounding you uh, since you've started, you know, uh, focusing on money along the artist. Um, I know I've read somewhere or I heard somewhere where you said um, before you didn't really want to work with other people like that? Like you kind of stay to yourself, like if the energy isn't right. Um, do you still feel the same way now? Or are you open to like working with other artists and you know, stay with my team of people, just me? Or are you open to working with like others? I think that came from just like, you know, not um, having established money long yet as somebody who was worth investing time um, and focus and attention into. And now that that has been, um, you know, that hurdle has been overcome, that obstacles overcome, um, it's a little bit easier. It's not super smooth because there are some people who still have like, you know, they have their own agenda and they have their own things that they would like me to um, contribute towards their goals. <clears throat> but again, it's like, you know, I'm only going where I feel that the energy is pure and things are flowing. And it's very easy to, you know, especially too with like all the requests, right? So it's like people want me to come do club appearances and they're trying to book me for shows. And it's very, very easy to tell what is gonna be a good opportunity and what isn't because the people who are patient and the people who are understanding and, and like who allow me my space to get myself together and rehearse. Okay, cool. And then there's people who are like, yo, what the, what's going on, bro? Like, what's up, you playing? Like, okay, well, see, that's probably why. I'm not coming there because, you know, your energy is just wild, you know, um, you know, that's just not me. And I think people will find that out about me more as like, I continue to make music and put things out um, and have fun with it. Um, and then when they get in my presence, you know, a lot of times people realize like, oh, she's different. She's not, you know, on the same thing that a lot of people are on. So, yeah. I do want to know, um, <laughs> made you take the single to TikTok? Now I know, um, you know, it's, it's strategy for a lot of artists now, but is that what it was for you? Or are you just a regular TikToker who's like scrolling on TikTok and you get sucked into like the TikTok rabbit holes? Are you one of those people? Or like, did you strategically choose to take the song to TikTok? Um, I mean, I definitely wasn't trying to become a TikToker, but I think I was just like playing around with TikTok because I enjoyed some of the videos. Like I was just trying to like figure out how, like how could I get my transitions down? Um, and then I had always wanted to do like some of those videos where it had the voice talking. Mm -hmm. um, so it just was like the technology was cool. And then I quickly started like getting traction. Like, you know, I think one of my videos got like 8,000 and then another one got like 20. And I was like, oh, Okay, um, so between like TikTok and Reels, um, it's two different demographics too. Like, there's a younger demographic on TikTok, mm -hmm. and I was like a like a like I don't want to say cooler, but like cooler in the sense that they're not too cool. Yeah, you know, like people actually like respond and are funny and like you know, it seems like it's a smaller community, even though it's huge, mm -hmm. um, where people will like you know you see tick like popular tiktokers commenting on other people's videos um the comments are hilarious on tiktok they almost as funny as the actual freaking video um and so i was just like really enjoying it and, like i've been saying this a lot in interviews like you know i actually have 
an authentic connection with um, my supporters and like the people who, like you could tell the difference in the comments between the people who are just seeing, you know, commenting because it came up on their For You page and people who actually are money long supporters. Right. Um, so I'm, I have a pretty good handle on like the communication there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also TikTok is like easier to navigate. So like if you go on here, you can see like, literally you can break it down um if i go to my inbox you can break it down for like who mentioned you yeah um who tagged you who answered your questions um the comments like you can break it down you can't do that on instagram mm-hmm. so it's easier to like find the comments and respond to them yeah. um so it was just really the technology honestly and then once it started to catch i was like okay I know I can use TikTok to test things. So like I'll put a unreleased song on there um, or I'll make a dance. And like, if it starts to catch, Mm -hmm. I'll bring it over to Instagram. Um, And then I know Instagram has a little bit of a different demographic. Like they're more like, you know, lifestyle things, um, personality things. Like they really want to see how I talk and like what I like, what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis, what I'm wearing, um, who I'm working with. And TikTok is like the music, you know, the comedy is like entertainment. So it's two different spaces. Do you think like going forward, you're going to, um, I say you test your music, but do you think like that's going to be one of your like main strategy things going forward when you're releasing music? Because I know you have other singles too that you might, you know, want to release soon. I mean, I think the great thing about TikTok and about me being independent is like, you never know, like, um, for example, Ty Dolla Sign, Something New, that song was like two years old. Yeah. And somebody made up the little mm-hmm. dance, you know, Soul Train line, and boom, you know, the song blew up. So the great thing about TikTok is that I, like, let's say, you know, I might take a break for six months and not make anything new. I can, like, go back through my catalog and make up a dance or, like, start a trend to some of my old music. And those things actually, like, those views actually translate to streams. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the difference, I think, between um tiktok and instagram is like you know i mean it's a little bit on instagram but like on instagram if somebody's already seen your content they won't necessarily view it again whereas on tiktok it doesn't matter like they'll view it over and over again you know what has been your favorite tiktok that has been made of your song so far because i saw so many what has been your favorite um i really love the maya angelou one that's funny I'll be, you know, I'm like, yours, mine, ours. Um, <laughs> and then the Christy show just did one, which I love. She was like, the devil has no power. Like, yes, I she saw was hilarious. And she actually was singing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, some of those is like, then Anaya, she made the one about the baby. Can't relate. I don't have no kids, but it was funny. Yeah. Made me laugh. I was like, that's exactly why I don't got none of them now. <laughs> <laughs> I love the support. I really do. Um, so for those who don't know, um, you've been married for some years now. Um, and I'm pretty sure like your marriage has kind of um influenced this song. I think if I didn't know the type of love that I do from being married, that I wouldn't have been able to write about it in the way that I have and like convey that feeling. Um, I wasn't thinking about him specifically when I wrote the song, mm-hmm. but obviously, you know, he has influenced it because some of it is from my personal experience. I'm not going to tell you which part. But, um, yes. Yeah, so, I, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll give them that. I guess for those out there who are, you know, in love or they're looking to get married or whatever, what are like five key things that you would say has kept your marriage strong or just in general are five key things that people should kind of keep in mind if they want a strong marriage? Learn how to let stuff go quickly. Get right. over it um express how you feel immediately in the moment like don't hold on to it don't like hold a grudge or be upset or like try to retaliate or that all of that stuff is petty um support your partner listen to them um laugh a lot and you know be intimate like it's not always it doesn't have to always be like intercourse it could just be you know cuddling like you know, let him lay his head on your chest, you know, he'll, like, massage my hands or my feet, like, just little things like that, um, even cleaning up, like, you know, you see I'm tired, unpack my suitcase for me, like, things like that, it's, like, just 
be kind to each other. I love that. And I hope people are listening because like, I think that can definitely keep people together. What do you like to do for fun outside of the studio? You know, I think now, you know, we're all getting, uh, we're getting who you, we're getting to know who you are as an artist. Like who is uh, Priscilla Renee? Like, you know, outside of the studio, what do you like to do? What's like one thing that people would just be surprised to know that you like to do? Um, I haven't done it in a while, but one of my hobbies is spinning fire. Yeah. I would have never guessed that. So I haven't practiced in a while. It's really dangerous because like these things that you can see is like metal. Yeah. And when you're spinning, if you catch it the wrong way, you could break a finger. But yeah, I spin I fire. That, where'd that come from? <laughs> uh my cousin actually mm -hmm. so my cousin he passed away in a motorcycle accident a few years ago and that's what made me um take it up because he he was supposed to you know we always had plans like when I get popping cuz like you gonna come in a row with me that's gonna be part of my show um which would have really been amazing mm -hmm. she was so good at it wow. um but yeah so I took it up because of him I've only been spending maybe about five years I'm not super good at it yeah. but um at least not the fan I'm not really great at this one but I'm pretty good at this and I could juggle I could do a lot of a couple tricks that's so interesting I feel like nobody would ever guess that unless you told them wow that's no I'm pretty I'm pretty adventurous like you know I love the outdoors I like to shoot mm -hmm. um hunt you know fish camping glamping um Glam but yeah I love I love like, you know, I'm a country girl. So, so you have um, Sneaky Link that's also on TikTok a lot. Like, I, I I think that popped up on like my for you feed too. Um, and I know it, I just love the way you said Sneaky Link in the song. It's so funny to me. But um, you know, the song is circulating. Um, do you plan to go hard with that single like you did with Hours and Hours, or is it was it just something fun to do? Like, what what's your plans for Sneaky Link? Is that going to be the next single, or what are you doing with that one? I mean, people seem to like it. I'm like, you know, we respond to the things that the people gravitate towards. So um, people are loving that song. Um, there's also a couple others like Time Machine that people really are like in love with. Yeah. So, you know, we just put gasoline on the things that are already kind of like blazing a little bit. Right. Um, the people did this with Hours and Hours. So it's like, I didn't really do much yeah. except for I made the song, I shot the video mm -hmm. and um, I like promoted it a few times and then it just kind of caught. Um, yeah, so I think there's a way to like, it, it could be overkill if you're like trying to shove things down people's throat. Absolutely. You kind of have to like be patient and let them come to you. So uh, I'll, I'll do as much as I can to like promote the songs that I think um deserve a shot but it's really only so much you can do like if the people want it they'll make it a thing right I love that what can we expect next from you um any touring I know with COVID things are kind of crazy but any touring um more uh music albums what can we ex expect I know I heard somewhere that you want to work with Drake you know can we expect yeah. anything like that like what's going on well Drake call me oh. um, I'm available. Um, but yeah, no, I, I would love to work with just like, I mean, I consider him to be like a super creative. Um, he has no limitation. He can do anything. And so, um, of course, my goal is to like link with other super creatives and, um, you know, for all we know, we might get together and make a shoot. Like it might not even be music. Um, so no limitations. Would love to work with Kanye, you know, Pharrell. There's just so many people who I consider to be incredible, um, super creative, superhuman individuals, Beyonce, Rihanna, Jay-Z. Um, <clears throat> they got a little work to do to get to a place where maybe they might feel comfortable to, um, you know, lend me their hand. But I think I'm on the way. So, you are. Yeah, lots of music coming. I have lots of music. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon with that. I know Hours and Hours is the track that everybody loves, but I have a lot more music where that came from. Yeah. And I just want to have fun. I think people can expect me to just always 
have fun and be experimenting and expressing myself um, in every way possible, you know, because I'm still figuring out where my boundaries end and like how far I can go. So um, yeah, just exploring. I love that. And I think people are going to learn that about you. Like you have a very wide range of uh, sounds. I know you you can write country, pop, like, you know, whatever. So I think, um, you know, I think we're all excited just to see what comes next from you because like, I feel like you're unpredictable. Like we don't know, you know, what we might get. So I'm just excited to see that. I, I just want to say like, I'm so like proud and I'm just so happy to hear your story. Um, Like how you're doing this independently, you're doing it organically, you know, Um, and you're very talented. So I'm just so happy to even have your story here and just uh be able to be a vessel to even help you tell your story. So I want to say thank you so much for this interview.